Today we're taking a look at Mesh to Surface. So Mesh to Surface is a plugin for Rhino that is great for a lot of different applications. Uh, today we're going to be taking a look at it on a organic part. So this is something that looks really simple but can be a little tricky to reverse engineer accurately. So we're going to take a look at a couple different ways we can approach this type of part with the mesh to surface plugin inside of Rhino in order to create the end result that we want. So we're going to look at this from a method of creating a series of 3D sketches to build out a patch framework. We're going to look at creating a very simple patch surface that we cut out of an extrusion and we're going to look at how we blend those together in order to create uh, the part that we need for our application. So the first way we're doing this is with a 3D sketch. So a 3D sketch inside of Mesh to Surface is really easy to do. As you've probably seen on screen, we can just click and drag these uh, initial 3D sketches that we created into specific positions in order to build out a patch framework that we want for the particular application of this part. So we can create these curves in a lot of different ways. This is a really quick and dirty way of doing it just to get the point across. Uh, we're not doing a lot of cleaning, a lot of trimming, so you'll notice this, that this will not be the cleanest model, uh, but this is a real world application. This is how you can generate a surface for a very simple or a complex process quickly and efficiently uh, and you can tailor this to your specific needs. So if you needed to create a very nice, precise, clean model that has flat straight edges in certain places for being pulled into a, another part, uh, we can go through the trimming processes of how to do that. We are not going to cover that in this particular video. This video is going to be focused mainly on uh, how can we most efficiently generate the type of surface that we want for our application. So in this particular 3D surface, we just created uh, the basic shape. We made sure it was accurate using this deviation analyzer where you can see it's red or green. And once that's done, we extrapolated the edges just to come over where uh, we need to have those. So it's overlapping any of the other parts that we create. That way we make sure we have enough information uh, to trim away the top sides or trim away the size of the part to the top of the part, so to speak. So Mesh to Surface is a very useful tool set, not only in its 3D capabilities, but also in its ability to generate 2D profiles from scan data. So if I haven't clarified already, what we're, we, what we're dealing with today is a scanned 3D surface of this part. So we take a structured light 3D scanning system, we take a couple 3D pictures, so to speak, of this, so we generate a polygonal mesh of this surface. Once that's done, uh, depending upon your application, we need to turn that 3D mesh into some form of most likely a CAD Part. So the whole process we're covering here is how do you convert a scan file to a CAD file when we're dealing with a lot of uh, complex organic geometry that's merging into itself in a lot of different ways. So the first way that we approach this obviously was with the 3D surface. Once we generated that, uh, we create a midplane because this is a symmetrical object. Uh, so we're creating that plane here, and when we have the information that we need, you'll notice that Mesh to Surface is a different window than Rhino, uh, but we have a tool that says Create in Rhino, and that pushes everything over to the Rhino uh, side of things where we can actually use our Rhino tool sets in order to manipulate this part how we need to, uh, to generate the information that we want. So uh, one little side note, this video is sped up by uh, twice the speed at which I actually did it, just to give you a reference of time. So everything that we're doing here is going 
approximately twice as fast as it was when I started creating this part. Another thing to note is this is the first time I came through and approached this part. So I want to give you a really realistic idea of what you'll be dealing with, how you can approach pieces, and just the general time frame that it would take to do something like this uh, when you are starting to use this tool. So now that we came in and created that part, we mirrored it, and we're simply coming in with Rhino and blending those surfaces together. So you can see I'm just doing a couple of basic blends here. Because of the straight nature of the back side of this part, uh, it blends, uh, it wants to blend in a way that I didn't particularly want it to uh, highlight, so I flattened it out for this application just to show if we, that was the type of information we wanted to choose. Uh, we can force Rhino to manipulate this part in a way that maybe it wasn't originally created. So that's one of the beauties of using this type of system is we can do an exact replication of our part but quite often an exact replication is not what we're looking for. You know, we want to be able to make modifications. We want to be able to generate a CAD file for this part uh, in the way that we need it. So whether that is for a machining process or for use in some sort of an assembly uh, or what have you, there is different design intent for every end user's application. So with that being said, we generated this part in one uh, way here uh, using those 3D sketches. And now what we're going to do is we're going to generate this part in a little bit different fashion. So instead of using those uh, 3D sketches and working more along organic parameters where we don't have a lot of uh, hard controls, right? It's more just uh, organic shapes that we're blending into other organic shapes we're going to now work with a surface extrusion of the back, the full outside profile, and then work from that outside in as opposed to that inside out in order to generate a little bit more of a clean, uh, hard CAD model, so to speak. So something that has a lot more uh, clean, precise edges than the other nerve surface that we just generated. So when doing that, we're going to use our extruded tool inside of Mesh to Surface where we can come in and create all these uh, different arcs, lines, splines, tangent arcs, uh, you know, whatever it is you need to understand, we're coming in and doing that here. Now there's a great tool set uh, inside of this extrude function, which is our deviation analyzer, so we can see exactly how accurate we're being to our part, uh, which we cover in other videos, but we don't have here. Uh, and the reason why we didn't use it in this particular part is we need to be on the very outside edge of it, right? Uh, so we don't want to try and best fit into the middle of this part, but rather we want to get the outermost perimeter of that filleted edge that's running all the way across that back profile. Now because that profile was a curve, we were able to very easily get the exact top position, which is a really, really helpful tool. So here we went ahead and just highlighted a particular function of this, or a particular area of this part to create a patch surface. Doing that is super simple. Uh, we just use our magic selector uh, in order to click on a particular surface and it selects all of the polygons around it based upon a crease angle that is a slider. So you can manipulate exactly how much information you uh, want to create that surface off of just by adjusting that slider bar. Uh, and again, that's something we have another series of videos on if you want to understand that function in more detail. So now what we're going to do is we're going to take that uh, surface and take that the extruded surface and also that patch surface and we're going to trim those two pieces together. Uh, so there's a couple of different ways to trim those together to get the exact shape that we want uh, but what we're going to use in particular today is the mesh to surface trim. So this is a really helpful tool because uh, when we deal with this simply we can select that mesh to surface trim tool set and then select the part we want to trim and it trims it right off. Then we can do the same thing on the outside profile. 
and we'll see it trims that right off as well. So now we have that nice clean shape and we're going to repeat the process that we did earlier where we take that surface, we mirror it, and then we blend those two surfaces together in order to create one full 3D shape. But if that wasn't what you're looking for, you just needed that outside shell with that nice uh, series of straight edges that are coming right off that part in a nice planar position, uh, we can leave it alone and leave it just at, as you saw it uh, a moment before. So a lot of different things can be done with mesh to surface when it comes to uh, reverse engineering parts and making them useful for your application. Uh, so with that being said, we'll finish cleaning up this part. We'll do a little bit of mir mirroring and a little bit of cleanup work to get everything exactly where we want it. But I hope that this video has been helpful and informative in showing you a couple of different ways that we can use mesh to surface to deal with a really tricky object.